Hello Booktube, Sean here, welcome back uh, to my channel. Uh, today, a slightly different video for you guys, I want to talk about the topic that has been the burning issue across Booktube over the last week. Uh, so unless you've been living under a rock, or perhaps a rock fall in this case, um, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, but let me assume that you don't. I'll try and give you the concise version. Um, what is going to happen is on the 20th, I think it's the 20th of February, uh, YouTube are going to change the criteria that a channel will need to be part of the YouTube Partnership Programme. Uh, from that point, you'll need uh, both a 1,000 subscribers and over 4,000 hours of watch time uh, on your videos in the last year. Without either of those, you cannot be part of the Partnership Programme, even if you are currently part of the Partnership Programme. If you don't have those, you'll be kicked off. Um, and if you're not part of the programme, you cannot monetize your content. So you cannot earn those advert click-throughs um, for anybody clicking on an advert associated with one of your videos, you cannot earn that money um, because you cannot monetize your content. Uh, so predictably, this has uh, led to um, a lot of anger and frustration uh, among small content creators who are now uh, going to be potentially excluded uh, from the partnership program or those that were perhaps close to the old criteria, uh, which are now going to have to you know, go even further to get... Um, on the program. Um, I wanted to talk about my kind of feelings uh, about where this decision kind of leaves us as a community um, and I wanted to talk about the community reaction to it um, and uh, how I think we need to try and sustain some of that uh, impetus. Um, so in, <laughs> notwithstanding the fact that I was hoping to buy a Ferrari next year from the ad revenue from this channel, um, I actually think even if I was at the criteria to uh, monetize my content, I'm not sure that I necessarily would. Firstly, because um, I'm in the privileged position of um, being able to buy the books I want when I want. I don't have any kind of significant running costs other than my own time uh, for the channel. So I don't have any kind of uh, lamps or microphones at this stage. That's probably obvious to you guys out there, right? Um, and secondly, I just find ads kind of generally annoying um, they are ubiquitous across YouTube and across the internet and anything I could do that would um, remove some of those or reduce the number of ads um, that's the kind of route that I would go for anyway so um, I wouldn't monetize my content but that doesn't mean that I don't understand the arguments being put forward by people who do uh, small creators who do um, let's face it most of these people are not making life-changing um, amounts of money here uh, this is about small amounts of money that can go towards the uh, con that can contribute towards the running costs of a channel, but also more critically that um, there is validation of what you're doing um, in monetary uh, terms, and that may seem rather crude to people who suggest, well, this is only a hobby. Is your um, is your return on it not the comments that you're having, the interactions? Well, yes, that's that's part of it, um, but there is undoubtedly uh, a motivating factor provided by the fact that you earn some small amount of money, you get some validation from that. And there is the promise that if you grow your channel, if you put in the effort, that that amount of money itself may grow into something more significant, where you can perhaps buy a new microphone outright, you can perhaps buy a couple of books a month uh, based on that money. Um, so it's not just about where you are now, it's about the promise of not necessarily turning YouTube into a living, but actually offsetting some of the costs that you have with a more significant uh, proportion of ad revenue. So I completely understand those arguments, even though I personally uh, perhaps wouldn't uh, monetize uh, my content. I think in general terms, given this is, this is really for a lot of small content creators about YouTube signaling where their priorities lie, and their priorities don't lie with the wider community. And I think if we didn't know that already, uh, this is just another indicator of that. Their priorities lie with commercial interests, with corporations, with these, um, you know, top YouTubers, these personal brands. And that's where they think they can make uh, the money. Uh, and it's just frustrating because obviously those personal brands at one time would have been small booktubers like uh, you and I. Uh, if you are a small booktuber, uh, and maybe they may not have continued with their channels if they had not been earn earning small amounts to contribute towards the running costs of their channel. 
um, but that's that's another kind of debate um, for another day. Um, what I wanted to talk about um, on this is this video is how this change may impact the ways that booktubers need to look at revenue streams, and I think probably um, from my kind of brief look at it, it this is not going to change YouTube's decision. If anything, the criteria are going to get more stringent. So booktubers are increasingly going to need to look at ways that they can diversify uh, the ways that they make income. Now, I've never clicked on, unfortunately, I've never clicked on an affiliate link um, on any booktube channel, you know, these book depository affiliate links. Um, and that's really rather poor from my point of view, because I've, I shop on book depository. I could come onto YouTube, find a channel that's got book depository links and click on a click on a link or bookmark it or whatever. Um, I would be buying the books anyway. Um, so some small contribution going back to the channel, a channel that I really enjoy. Um, we should find a way of doing more with those affiliate links. I know it's small amounts, but um, so is the ad revenue. And I think the other thing, of course, is Patreon. Not that I would consider that um, on this channel, um, at least not until I've got a lot more in the way of subscribers. But I think for the channels, you know, 500 to 1,000 or perhaps 1,000 to 10,000, maybe Patreons uh, can be worthwhile because you only need a couple of, you know, your most ardent supporters to contribute, you know, a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds, whatever it may be, whatever the currency is, uh, where you are. And that is already going to be more than you would earn, uh, a lot of us would earn. Uh, through the uh, ad uh, revenue. Um, I, f I know I get the feeling that, you know, people are reluctant to put Patreon out there. They're reluctant to ask um, supporters and followers, subscribers, um, you know, for money. It feels, it can feel a bit like a kind of begging bowl, I guess. But, you know, I, there are certain channels that I would certainly consider a small amount of money um, every month uh, just to support the running costs um, of those channels. So that's, I think that's where the, there needs to be a look at some kind of diversification of those uh, income streams. What I'd like to turn to next is really a discussion of uh, what has been the silver lining of this YouTube decision, which has been the community reaction. I mean, there's, Twitter has had threads on there encouraging people to post links to their channel to give them exposure. Uh, we've had the small booktuber a tag created on the channel Die Kitty. I will link the video for that down below. We've had just today, Small Booktuber Sunday, um, which was being um, run by um, Ariat Rosie. I will link, I know it's gone now, but I will link her channel down below and the video so that you can see what that was all about um, and uh, subscribe to her channel if you're not uh, already. So there's been this great amount of kind of energy around encouraging support of small booktubers and it's been brilliant. I've really kind of enjoyed it. Personally, I've subscribed to some new channels that I was unaware of uh, before. Um, and I've got a small kind of collection of new subscribers, so welcome, um, along the way as well. Um, and that's been really encouraging for me personally. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was uh, that's all well and good. And I'm, I'm glad that it's happened. I'm glad that people are getting more um, exposure. What the question needs to turn to next is how that gets sustained beyond um, you know this immediate knee-jerk reaction to the YouTube uh, decision and I, what I'm not talking about here is because it's only natural that something like this happens there's a reaction and then you kind of see um, a ratcheting down of activity um, as uh, the decision gets sort of further away um, and that's that's only natural um, and that that will happen with this uh, as well. Um, and I think the other thing is as well that, you know, there has always on BookTube been an, an informal kind of signposting uh, to new channels and people commenting on each other's channels and finding um, and subscribing that way, uh, checking out the people who are commenting on your videos, subscribing to their channels. Um, and BookTube has always been great for that, um, in my view this informal kind of network that kind of says, oh, I enjoy, you know, such and such a channel, or I saw this on such and such a channel, go and check them out in your videos, in the comments. I think though what um, I would like to uh, see is a way that that um, informal kind of approach that we've always had on BookTube uh, could be enhanced perhaps 
uh, with some of the energy we've seen in the immediate aftermath of the YouTube uh, decision. And, from, and, and this is not about some kind of top-down, diktat, pressurised, you know, everybody must do this kind of uh, approach. This is about channels thinking of ways that they can support uh, smaller booktubers uh, who they believe in, uh, who they, whose content they enjoy. And I mentioned in my 2018 channel goals video that I wanted to make sure that every month I was uh, doing a kind of small booktuber shout out, maybe sub 500 subscribers, uh, just to contribute to deepening uh, the community um, and showing my um, acknowledgement of the content provided by uh, other people. And if I can just push, I know I've got a tiny amount of subscribers, but if only a couple of them uh, follow my suggestions and subscribe to some of these uh, channels, uh, this this is a major, uh, a steady trickle of subscribers uh, can be uh, a major kind of source of validation and motivation for, for small channels. Uh, and I think it's important that we do that. I'd be interested to hear what other people uh, have to say about the ways that we try and sustain some of this uh, wonderful kind of community energy that's come out of this decision um, without making it a kind of um, regimented uh, approach. And I think that is about channels personally taking responsibility uh, for promoting other small booktube channels and thinking of ways that they can do that and thinking of ways that they can collaborate with other channels. Uh, interested to hear your thoughts. What I am going to do below this video is I'm going to link uh, a few channels, uh, smaller booktube channels whose content I've been um, enjoying recently. I will do a separate shout out video at the end of the um, end of this month, towards the end of this month. Uh, but I just wanted to link uh, some channels down below that I wish you, um, that I would like you to check out, uh, encourage you to go and support uh, whose content I've enjoyed. This is no, by no means an exhaustive list. And as I say, there's many channels that um, I kind of enjoy and uh, will over, the t over time be, as I say, calling those out in shout out videos that I'm going to start doing um, every month. Uh, so that's all I've got to say. I know it's been a long and rambling video. Um, hopefully it's made some kind of sense. Uh, if you've got any ideas about um, the ways we can uh, build a community with stronger links, support small booktubers, um, not just in the immediate aftermath of this decision, but ongoing, then I would be glad to hear about those in the comments. And uh, that's it for me for now. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves.